people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome back to another news update video. We're back at it again because I've missed out on quite a bit of news. But let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into the news. First things first, Sister Location has been released for the Nintendo Switch, but it's only in the Americas. Clickteam has stated they have done it this way because of the pandemic, it has been Difficult for them to release it in other parts of the world, but they did promise that whenever the game was done, they would release it as soon as possible, so this was their solution. So, everywhere else in the world besides the Americas will unfortunately have to wait until the first half of July. If you are eager to see what it's like on the Switch, we have been doing a full playthrough of it, and in fact, I do plan on streaming Custom Night. Yes, we've gotten that far in just like three or four days. Um, I'm planning on streaming Custom Night very soon, so if you don't want to miss that, subscribe, and we'll be doing that very soon. Anyways, getting back to the actual news, we have the final cover for the graphic novel for The Twisted Ones. It's up on screen right now, and as you can see, it looks really, really good. It looks much better than the previous cover, um, I'm gonna be doing a side-by-side -side right now. The final cover looks really, really good, I'm really proud of it. I think it turned out really, really great. Um, the characters have gone a little bit of a redesign, mainly the Twisted characters. I don't see many, if any, differences with Charlie and John. Just as a reminder, it releases on February 2nd, 2022. So, we have that to look forward to. Another quick news, um, we don't have the cover just yet, but Fazbear Fright's book number 6 will have one soon. So once that is revealed, we will of course be covering it in a separate video. Moving on to some merchandise, um, we have some new masks and outfits and hoodies from Rubies. If you guys don't remember who Rubies are, they are the company behind these outfits for the series. They're great. <laughs> Not really. But the new outfit does look really, really cool. You've got the security guard, and you have like five or six different masks that you can wear, and then a complete hoodie. It looks really good. And if the final product turns out anything like this art, I think it could actually be pretty good for this company. I think my favorite one would have to be the Freddy mask with sound. It's kind of like the... Uh, was it Funko that made the motion sensor animatronics? Like you put the, your hand in front of them and they like open their mouths and like scream at you. If it's like that, that's gonna be great. I really hope these turn out good because they do look pretty good and I do think they have potential. And, and speaking of official merchandise, it's about time we talked about this. I wanted to wait to post this video or record it until we had all three collections out and we do today. If you guys don't know, Illumix has made official merchandise for Five Nights at Freddy's AR Special Delivery, and let me just say, don't get your hopes up. It's 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 not good. But we're gonna be taking a look at them right now, so prepare your butts. It's it's ouch. It, this is ouchville. We're going into right now. Population Illumix. So they've been hinting towards releasing merchandise for the game for quite a while, and the other day they put out this tweet saying FNAF AR merch is coming this month with three collections every item under $50 <sighs> every single listen here folks we know it's been some tough times out there but don't you worry you can get a balloon boy t-shirt for $50 <laughs> under $50 and the best art and design <laughs> the best art and design you will ever find the just the best the best designs. Yeah, so this merchandise will be releasing on the 23rd of June, so only in a couple of days. So let's see what exactly is going to be releasing in two days. So the first collection is called the Sweet Surprise Limited Edition Collection, and of course it'll be limited edition. Everything is with um, this type of stuff. So this is, this is the first collection, the Sweet Surprise Collection. Now I just want to say, right? Middle top. Where have you seen that before? Oh. Oh, no way. Is that cloak? Dude, is that cloak? Man, that's awfully similar. To be fair, they could have been working on this before cloak came out with the FNAF merch. Also, let's let's talk about Chocolate Bonnie for a second. He's in the same pose, the same render, <laughs> just kind of altered slightly. You know, sometimes he's a silhouette, sometimes half of his face is cut off. 
you know, sometimes half of his body is cut off. Also the text. Chocolate Bonnie. I ate back. What? Like, is that supposed to be funny? I ate back? That's not funny. Now if, now if we had a shirt that had already ate Chica on it, that would be funny. But I ate back is not funny. It's really, I don't know what they were going for. But you may notice, it says swipe for more. So hopefully, you know, this collection can, you know, make up for itself. And then I, oh, nope, it's just the hoodie with the same, the same design as the last one. I ate back. Honestly though, collection two doesn't look that bad. Don't get me wrong, it still doesn't look great. It just, in my mind, I think it's the best one. Wait, so here, you have a tank top. Finally, some differences between a t-shirt and a, a sweatshirt. We got a tank top. By the way, it's only t-shirts, like it's only shirts. No pants, no socks, no hats, no badges, no pins, no nothing, no wallets, whatever, what have you. It's just, it's literally just shirts and sweatshirts and tank tops. Oh uh, yeah, here's what I was talking about. It's Balloon Boy with hi and hello. And then there's Springtrap, Foxy, and Let's Play. Oh uh, yeah, you guys remember the red eyes from the teaser trailer? Now I'm not saying that these were easy to make. I'm saying that these are really easy to make. I literally can make BB's t-shirt in 5 seconds in my, like, the software I use for making thumbnails. How could I forget the long sleeve tees? It's the same design, except they've got rid of the red triangle. That's a rectangle. The Springtrap one looks kind of cool. I think that's probably the best design that they've ever done. That is literally a screenshot off of the application store that they just put it on a shirt. It's just, ugh. Like, they were so easy to make. I bet they were so easy to make. And then finally, the last collection, the Eternal collection, um, is just, it's, it's so bad. It's so bad. You got the icons and you've got the, you've got the logo. They try to trick you into thinking that they have more products than they actually do by putting up different colors. It's ridiculous. You have two designs right here, but you spread it out across different colors so it looks like you have more products than you actually do. Long sleeve tea gang, where you at? Yup, there it is. Uh, sweatshirts, of course, with the logo just right in the middle. And then the hoodies again with the stupid, stupid icons. Some of them look okay, but almost all of them look absolute garbage. <laughs> I'm being 100% honest, they don't look good. They do not. I'm sorry, we've been on this for, for a while, but I just want to get across just my complete opinion on these things, is that they are not good. They don't look good at all. I'm extremely disappointed. These look bad. I'm not gonna lie, they look bad. I'm not gonna buy anything. I'm not gonna buy any of those. Anyways, I know I'm gonna get shit in the comments, but I don't care. If you think they look good, that's great for you, but I'm just saying, in my personal opinion, they don't look good at all. Simple. Anyway, so let's move on to some uh, brighter news. I was going to save this for last, but I feel like I, I want to cheer myself up. So if you guys didn't know, the Fredit actually had a little competition with some fan games recently. There was a game jam, where basically game developers would create a game based off of a prompt they were given and they would have a limited amount of time to make said game based off of the prompt and then they would be entered into a competition, people could vote for the best fan game, and the winners have been announced today, so we're gonna have a look at the winners. Now there were quite a bit of fan games, some of which we have played on the channel, most of which I do have lined up and am currently planning on playing them very, very soon, so stay on the lookout for that. So in first place was FNAFB, Rockstar Freddy's Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad, Literally Downright Evil Heist. That was the winner. Very nice job. Some runner-ups. We have After Effect and Afton's Revenge. Afton's Revenge we have played on the channel, and After Effect we will play on the channel very soon because I've heard it has a really good story and I know a lot of other people have been playing it so I'm like hey let's let's dive in most noteworthy there were three winners for this category Afton's Revenge, Scooped, and The Special Birthday. Now we played Afton's Revenge and Scooped 
Uh, originally, I did record a special birthday episode, but it got corrupted, so I had to scrap it. But I do plan on returning to it, because it is pretty good. So yeah, those were the winners of the Game Jam, and now I have saved the best for last. The Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Yeah, when was the last time we had news about this? Apparently though, it's going pretty well. There was this video posted by the channel 3C Films, and he actually had a speak with Jason Bloom. Anyways, this is what Jason had to say when asked about the Five Nights movie. Uh, Jason, I just wanted to ask you, uh, obviously your studio has a lot of uh, horror movies up and coming. The one I search on the daily for news about is uh, the Five Nights of Freddy's movie. I was just wondering if you could give any little tidbit or information, man, because I, I, I'm begging for crumbs here. Um, well, it's, it's, uh, we have been working on it a long time, but it's, it's, I, I, and I, I, you know, I'm not telling you anything that I haven't said to a certain degree before, but I am, um, it's super, uh, active. So I really awesome. feel like we have a very good shot at getting to see a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. I feel like, it, you know, it's, it's really moving forward. It's not stalled or anything else. It might seem that way because we haven't done any announcements about it, but it's not stalled. It's moving rapidly forward. And, um. And uh, you know, I don't want to put a timeline on it, but but soon soon no. soon we'll get it. Soon we'll get a no. movie. I really feel confident about You've that. You've said enough. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate All that. All right. Okay, so Jason said that the movie is super active, which makes me super happy. He says that no, the movie is not stalled. No, the movie is not canceled. It is moving rapidly ahead, which I am very very happy about. I know a lot of people have been waiting five years. Guys, it's been five years since the movie was announced, back in 2015, when, get this, Warner Brothers was supposed to be working on the movie. Jason unfortunately didn't tell us where the movie is right now, but just like what Scott said during, I believe it was a Steam post, either the good movie gets made, or no movie is made at all. I think that is a great motto to go by when making this game, I mean making this movie. So yeah, that is it. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more updates in the future, and I will see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.